following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, squeezably soft host. As always, we like to come to you at the time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And what do we have? Uh, we're off seven points in the S&P cash. We're off of about... Uh, Eight points off the low of the day, off about 12 points off the high of the day. Volume is 2.15 a billion shares on the New York Consolidated Tape. Uh, the dollar index is off 12 cents, 96.65. That was with some amazing and huge intervention by the Treasury trying to keep that dollar down today. We also see uh, a lot of uh, uh, rocking and rolling in the uh, bond market. Uh, basically flat on the day. We got down to about 133 on the TLT. Uh, got to a high of uh, 134.27. Um, and it just looks to me like uh, most of the government or quasi-government entities are all about trying to keep this market from uh, headed uh, south. And I, I thought about this. Uh, what is a good way to illustrate this uh, for everybody that uh, is telling me that uh, the government's holding the market up. I want to hear one person that tells me that the government is holding the market down. Does anybody believe that? If you do, give me a call, 877-927-6648. Email me at path at tfnn.com. But uh, if the market is so bullish, then why did it take it off? I, I, that's the part I don't get. Saw a lot of rabid bulls foaming at the mouth today on infotainment cable television. Some people spreading disinformation. I had to laugh my rear end off because I uh, turned the TV on, I don't know, it was 6 a.m. in the morning or something. Just get the first flash of the futures and what they're doing. And I uh, saw uh, this gentleman uh, explain why uh, this state that he was in and covering uh, was very, very uh, active, and uh, anybody could win it for the presidential election. And I thought, uh, okay, two weeks ago, one candidate left, shut down all ads, and uh, decided that uh, they weren't going to do anything there. So was it wishful thinking on there or just trying to uh, create a narrative so someone would watch thinking that it did matter? But I'm thinking... Uh, Mm, kind of hard to make me believe that, unless something drastically has changed. And nothing really has. Uh, kind of like the market. market's kind of in this little area here. Uh, looking quickly, uh, I'm thinking, you know what? Is anything really changed? The answer is we're kind of pretty much where we were. The only thing that changes is uh, the estimates on uh, turnout for one side of the aisle or the other. Um, but the polls really haven't changed at all. Uh, but what does change is people that want to get you to watch uh, their television show. Um, maybe they're leaning on these pollsters to change uh, their models. But those models are basically based on a couple things. They went out and surveyed a bunch of people. That number really hasn't changed in the last two or three or four weeks for the most part. Pretty tight. What has changed is these models where they somehow have figured out that from week to week, a whole bunch of people are going to show up if they're voting for X, and a whole bunch of people aren't going to show up if they're voting for Y. And what is it? Um, there used to be a thing in, uh, in uh, engineering that I was involved in. It was called WAG, a wild-ass guess. And uh, as far as I can tell, they go from one guess to another, and uh, nothing has really significantly changed. Um, but uh, what do we do have? We've got a lot of disinformation. People trying to make news where there is none, trying to infer a signal where there is 
uh, nothing to infer a signal from. Uh, and uh, I'm just trying to keep my head down, tend to my knitting, uh, watching what's going on. Uh, I am bearish. I am um, probably a better description is I suspect that 70% chance we go lower, about a 30% chance that we go higher. Again, that goes back to what I said at the opening of the show. How many people think that the government is trying to keep the market lower? I haven't, I haven't bumped into one person. Uh, I know a lot of people think that they're trying to keep the market higher. Um, and that kind of tells me a great deal. Anyway, 21.55 on the S&P cash, 2.2 billion shares. So uh, it's going to be an interesting close. Uh, we're off five points. Is that the end of the world for the for these folks? No, uh, but if for the bullish case, what is the next thing that's going to come out here that's going to tell everybody that suddenly they're not going to raise interest rates in December? And uh, that was we kind of got the last little taste of that today. Maybe we'll get some more job numbers that makes anybody change it. But it was about perfect for a lot of people. It was a little light. Uh, so it gave cover to those people that said that, that maybe they won't raise. Uh, but when we actually got into it, eh, I've got it on one of the slides here. So we'll talk about it a little bit more. Um, let's get this party started. Then it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1896, the Dow Jones Industrial Average begins continuous daily publication. Its 12 members are the greatest industrial giants of the time. American cotton oil, American sugar, American tobacco. I'm starting to get a theme. Uh, if you named a company, it better start with American. Uh, Chicago. Oh, oh, we got one here. They threw us a curve. Chicago Gas. American Spirits, General Electric, Laclede Gas, National Lead, U.S. Cordage, Tennessee Coal and Iron, U.S. Leather, and U.S. Rubber. Uh, well, I guess we can go from American to U.S. or a city or town in America. And that covered about 80% of them. If you can remember, how many of those do you know now? Uh, if people uh, are telling you that these stocks will endure forever. On this day in 19... Well, 1896, one of the biggest weapons of mass delusion is started, and that is the Dow Jones Industrial Average. As we know today, 30 stocks are literally insignificant with the broader market. This is a handful of stocks, 95% institutionally owned. That last 5% is always what people are wrestling over, and uh, God love them. Jobs numbers did come out, as we said at the opening of the show. Stanley Fisher said uh, this morning that uh, jobs report was pretty close to the Goldilocks number. Unemployment is somewhere very close to the natural rate. I think we're very close to full employment. Fisher said at the Institute of International Finance's annual membership meeting uh, in Washington, D.C. and Car Wash. So what do we have going on out here? We had a couple of the Fed speakers out here, and they were saying, hey, we don't see any reason why we can't raise rates. Uh, and that pretty much put the kibosh on what everybody was saying, which is it's party time. Let's party like it's 1999. The world can only go up. Markets only go higher. Houses only get more expensive. We'll be back after this. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software.
software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Hey, Take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. And we're back. Uh, one of the greatest books ever written, uh, I bring it up occasionally, like every day, is Jeffy, uh, Jesse Livermore's uh, Reminiscence of a Stock Operator. In there, he has one quote, and I always found it very interesting because it took me a while to actually figure it out. Uh, as traders, especially as day traders, you're wondering about what's happening right now in the next 30 minutes. Uh, it's very tough to see the big picture, but after going through a handful of boomed bust cycles, uh, you start to start figuring it out. Uh, but he said uh, in the middle of the book, and there's another thing to remember. And that is the market does not culminate in one grand blaze of glory. Neither does it end with a sudden reversal of form. It takes a while to put in tops. It takes a while to put in bottoms. And uh, I don't know. It just seems to me, and I was watching, uh, tuning through some uh, cable infotainment, uh, financial infotainment shows today. Uh, and people were kind of screaming, you know, uh, top of the market, bottom of the market, top, top of the market, bottom of the market. And I was thinking, you know, these these folks are no better than the frauds that were constantly um, in, um, uh, oh, like the, the psychics, making 7,000 predictions. 15 of them come true, and everybody swarms around them, saying that they're the latest swami, and they can predict everything. Uh, I suspect that if you you know, just wanted to uh, constantly say that a president was going to get assassinated. Eventually, you would be right. There's about a handful of other ones that would eventually be right. Uh, but uh, eh, probably your batting average would be rather low. Uh, and uh, I just I just see those people, and I, I hope that I never come across that. And the reason I was going to say that is it's easy to pound the table. Um, I am often wrong. Uh, but generally, the way I'm often wrong is a little bit wrong and very, very much right. Uh, and uh, anytime I notice that I start pounding the table on the market, it almost always goes against me. And I was uh, actually uh, talking to somebody this morning and saying, you know, I'd like to say something, but you know what? I'm pretty sure that the hubris 
I would be showing by saying I know instead of I think would have the trading gods shake their fist and the markets right in my collective face. So I do not do that. I also know that uh, a lot of these things seem uh, like they happen in a minute. And um, how many people have we seen on television uh, or in a new movie and suddenly they're the new it person, the new it girl uh, in the movies? And everybody always says, yeah, it's just like it was an overnight success. And nine out of ten times we find out they spent uh, ten years waiting tables and uh, doing other things and working in bookstores uh, before that uh, the big breakout actually happened. Markets are kind of like that. And uh, this is just a little bit more so. Uh, but, uh, you know, this is – it's not that it's never happened before. In fact, uh, probably the longest run of a market uh, trying to make a top was in the, I think it was 1905 through 1907. And uh, it finally culminated when the San Francisco earthquake happened. And even then, it took another five days for everybody to figure out uh, that the jig was up. But uh, just remember it. The market does not uh, culminate in one grand blaze of glory, neither does it end with a sudden reversal of form. And uh, hopefully, as we uh, discuss things, know that uh, I'm always thinking that uh, whatever it is, there's, you know, 60% chance we go lower. Or, you know, a 50% chance we go higher. But my decision is, or uh, is it a 50-50 chance we go 10 points higher and 100 points lower? Uh, you, there's more than just whether or not it's going higher or lower. It is the magnitude of whether it's going higher or lower. And I don't always say that. And so uh, I could fall into that Gene Dixon uh, phony weasel type. Uh, and it's your job as the great listeners to keep me honest. As always, I want you to tell two friends about the Power Trading Hour. And he tells two friends, and she tells two friends, and, and so, so on, on, and so on, and so on. And, so on. on. and then I'd have a lot more listeners. So get to it, folks. You know what your job is. In the meantime, it is a mad, mad, mad market. You know, we had a lot of signals out here this morning, and I wanted to see how some of these uh, developed, mostly because uh, I haven't had seen this many Gartley patterns uh, in the gold markets in a while. I uh, wanted to see whether we had any follow through and or with some volume. Um, I know Newmont Mining is a dog. The chart doesn't look all that bad. In fact, it's one of the better looking Gartleys. Uh, this is coming back to a gap up on NEM. That was the uh, 3rd of June uh, that started this big run up to the high on August 12th. We've been working our way back down. Um, you know, you've had some high volume like on the 4th uh, with 13 million shares. But, you know, if it was just NEM, the dog of uh, all gold stocks, I probably would be thinking maybe a little uh, something else. Um, but uh, there's a handful of these stocks. I wanted to look at a few of them. Of course, if you subscribe to the Art of Timing the Trade Charts, uh, you'll get these every morning. But just, just a handful of these, so I wanted to go through them. Um, most of these do not look all that bad. Um, I, when I saw these last night, I hadn't been paying a lot of attention to gold. I have a lot of other positions on and, and uh, thought, eh, this is on the pullback. It's probably going to take a little while. Uh, but uh, these things look about perfect. Uh, if you were going to get a bounce and start seeing people come back in to gold here, you know, we've got maybe another day or two for these things to develop. If not, if they break through this level, uh, could they set up an expansion all the way to a uh, a uh, one point uh, two seven instead of just a, a small retracement? So uh, you you know you might want to look at those carefully over the next couple of days. But I saw that one, um, a couple of them. In fact, it is you know normally we get two, three, maybe four Gartleys at a time. So you kind of have to look and see what's happening on them. Um, but um, what was that? Uh, this, uh, I think it was maybe one yesterday, two. Uh, let's take a quick look. Can't remember. Was it Silver Wheaton? Mm, it's another one I can't think of now. 
It was in the newsletter this morning. Anyway, there were a handful of them. Keep an eye on that. Um, and again, a lot of people just think, well, there's a pattern and it didn't work. But to me, if they all work, then that's telling you one thing. If they don't work, that's telling you yet another one. Oh, it was GFI yesterday. Um, so what do you want to, and what are you thinking about uh, in these Gartley patterns or any pattern? Um, they don't all work the same. But if you get a whole bunch of them and they're all telling you the same thing and yet they don't work, that's telling you quite something else. And uh, kind of like uh, uh, what's uh, Sherlock Holmes, his most famous case, the dog that didn't bark. It was the fact that the dog didn't bark that solved the case. Uh, when these patterns and you get a bunch of them, they're all telling you the same thing and they all don't work. That is telling you something else. The dog that did not bark. We'll be back after this. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter. And if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're back. We're going to look at a few other charts out here. As I said, a lot of signals suddenly developing in this market, but uh, uh, we're not getting a big indication from the indexes. Um, wanted to see how a AstraZeneca uh, did. Uh, nice Wyckoff standard pattern out here. Took off on the 28th of August, uh, no, of July, 
with uh, 20 million shares. Uh, it does kind of work its way back down here. Volume, pretty nice. Uh, just uh, 2.4 million shares um, today. We kind of came into it with 4.4 million back on the 9th of September. Uh, but nice lighter volume out here. A couple of these uh, stocks around that uh, biotech sector should be uh, giving a nice signal and a reversal signal today. Uh, really not getting that, certainly not getting it in the IBB. It's still off a buck and a half um, and really hadn't found a lot of love. It's only a buck off the lows of the day. Anyway, AstraZeneca, um, you know, if uh, things really changed, uh, I could turn on a dime. Now, there's a handful of these stocks out here that are looking interesting, um, but uh, I didn't really have to see something change that I don't see right now. Anyway, uh, volume is uh, pretty wimpy. Um, had some strong volume early in the day. The last two hours has been light. 2.3 billion shares as we go into a weekend. A long weekend, isn't it? We're closed Monday, aren't we? It's Columbus Day. Is it closed? I'll have to check on that. Someone brought that up in the den yet? I don't think anybody has. Uh, no one's brought it up. No, well, nobody's here Monday. If it is Columbus Day, I think. I'll check on that during the break. But I'm pretty sure. Oh, market is open. Uh, just not a settlement day. Eh, I thought I was getting a day off. Eh, someone has, there always has to be somebody to drop something in the punch. Uh, BE Aerospace, been watching this uh, tag, uh, this gap uh, down uh, that goes back a wise. Uh, saw 1.16 million shares on the 6th. Saw 1.1 million shares yesterday. This thing is pulling back a little bit. We'll go into some longer patterns out here. Uh, one of the reasons I am not uh, bullish out here is so many of these stocks uh, testing these gap downs that had huge volume. And I really just not seeing any kind of juice to the upside. In the case of BE Aerospace, uh, the gap down happened on the 22nd of uh July uh, 2015 with uh, 10.2 million shares. We're just getting back into that now. And like I said, uh, not a lot of juice, uh, one-tenth the volume. In fact, you'd be willing to look at some of these if you are thinking about some shorts, um, some nice patterns. This one, on a longer-term basis, uh, has an untested low, that January 20th, uh, $36.38 low. Go into a few others. Again, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648. can email me at path at tfnn.com. And you can hurl epithets in the Tiger chat room. Uh, next market holiday, oh, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Eh, everybody's uh, deciding to rain on my parade today. I was hoping to get Monday off. Uh, what else do we have out here? Uh, Compaye de Bonaventure SA, BVN. <laughs> yes thank you steve uh you know they kill the messenger that's the old saying uh september 1st 12 dollars 16 cents three million shares we've come back into it and a little bounce out here today very light volume yesterday uh so nice bounce uh, energy was a little off on the way back i still suspect that we're going to get some sideways action even if you were going to be bullish on that stock um, what else do we have out here? A few stocks I wanted to look at. Um, let's see how some of these are doing. Uh, Cavium Network, C-A-V-M. Uh, there's this uh, nice little gap that is now acting as pretty stiff resistance. Um, this thing has been going sideways here for a while, maybe a week, 10 days. Little dojis for the last three days out here. Very light volume today, so this is one you want to put on your radar for Monday. My guess is we're going to have that thing either break out or break down, uh, which would be that Monday schedule. Uh, okay, the bond market and the U.S. Postal Service will be closed. Regular trading hours will be in effect. No early market close that day. Bah, humbug. Okay, CBRE. Uh, this one had a nice little gap up on some volume, 3.3 million shares. We're kind of coming back and just tagging that very lightly. Um, 
1.5, 1.6 million shares uh, on that. Uh, what's the, I'm trying to remember exactly what this company does. Let's look that up real quick. Do, 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 do. Commercial real estate services and investment companies worldwide, uh, Middle East, everywhere. Company offers advisory services, uh, execution to owners, investors, and occupiers of real estate, leasing, deposition, acquisition. So anyway, uh, this has come back. You want to watch how this comes into this uh, 2675, probably again on Monday. I think there's going to be probably fairly equal volume to this. And again, any of these interest rate stocks that you can see out there. In fact, we were talking about Honeywell earlier today uh, in the den. And you see those stocks, you kind of need to know at least broadly what they do. Uh, Honeywell, of course, very susceptible uh, to the business cycle. Um, they're very big at putting in uh, a lot of stuff uh, thermostats, temperature control systems, uh, all kinds of industrial control systems that they make. So if business turns down, they're generally the first to get the uh, flu or the Ebola when things head south. And of course, everybody's had zero interest rates for so long. If they tick up a little bit, wouldn't be surprised to see building come down just a bit. Anyway, uh, keep an eye on this come Monday. Uh, and as it goes into this gap from the 12th of July. CBL, which is CBL and Associates, is another one uh, that is coming back down to a sign of strength. That sign of strength happened on the 29th of July, 7.5 million shares. Uh, started to get into that candle yesterday with 4.6 million shares. A little bounce today on light volume. Again, uh, I am a big fan of seeing about half the gap uh, filled before I would pull a trigger. You'd also need to have a market that was uh, uh, saying a lot higher, not a lot lower, in my opinion. Uh, but uh, very interesting. We were talking about Cabot uh, and it over the last few days. I was speculating that this thing looked very weak. Uh, we've got kind of some dark cloud cover here with Cabot CBT today. Uh, you know, nice uh, spike higher, just no volume today. You got a gap down here about $50.50. So we'll keep an eye on that uh, on a longer term basis. I think this actually, uh, is that, uh, let's take a look at this. Maybe it was a longer term. Eh, I think it was just that $50 level where it broke higher and didn't have a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. This last run, not a lot of juice. Not surprised to see this thing pull back in to the trading range. Uh, cranes and such, we talked about it yesterday. Be back. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. If you're looking to discover a new financial resource and diversify your financial portfolio, consider the new Market Safe Focus Commodity CD from Everbank. This five year US dollar denominated CD gives you exposure to six equally weighted commodities, including gold, silver, copper, nickel, soybeans, and sugar, in one powerful CD. With annual pricing caps of 50% per component, you could earn up to a 50% upside payment at maturity if the commodities increase in value across annual pricing dates. And should the opposite occur, your principal 
deductible is 100% protected. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There is no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. Don't miss out. Take advantage of this financial resource designed to grow with the times. The October 13th funding deadline will be here before you know it. So hurry over to everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. Once again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a member FDIC. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. And right now you can get a two week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile based scanner in the industry. Powered by the acclaimed Taz proprietary algorithms, this feature rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Yes, you can check out my newsletters. Uh, the longer term uh, newsletter for technology, the Tech Insider, and of course, the daily Path of Least Resistance. And uh, we're going to get into Microsoft in a minute, take a quick look at it. If you want to see one of the most important things that Microsoft has up its sleeve, you might want to check that out today. You can always get a 30-day free trial for the Tech Insider or the Path of Least Resistance, either one. But, uh, yeah, interesting stuff happening at Microsoft. Uh, what do we have here? I wanted to, I got an email uh, about uh, Tesla. Uh, and uh, as we're looking at that, uh, okay. So I just wanted to get my email here. Uh, so we got John. Yeah, what is that? Can't even read it. Uh, he's from somewhere in Florida. Uh, anyway, we've got a gap down, or yeah, I would, yeah, we got a gap down in Tesla. Uh, they had a couple of decent days out here where they ran the shorts after earnings. Uh, this is, uh, you know, you got a gap down yesterday. Continued on on bad news. I, you know, the biggest problem is I'd like to short this, but everybody, you know, the thing's still 25% uh, short, so. Pretty easy to get sh uh, squeezed out. I'd like to see a nice squeeze where I know that all the rest of the shorts are out, so I won't have a lot of folks uh, trying to squeeze me again. But every day, including yesterday, this thing comes down, everybody shorts it, and then it, you know, a couple of days later, you get squeezed back out again. Um, I'd like some kind of bigger signal that this has failed. Again, I've made no secret that I think this is a $40 stock. Uh, at $200. So there's a lot of meat on the bone on this one. The downside is it is the biggest cult stock since I Omega in 1996. So what do you do about it? Apple's kind of a cult stock, but again, it's got a company that actually builds something and makes money. Uh, not like Tesla that's uh, throwing about 500 million away uh, every quarter or two. So, and also thinking about doing really silly and stupid stuff like buying Solar City. So, uh, you know, down, volume didn't pick up today. Again, I would still want to get a nice squeeze out of this thing and have very, very light volume uh, before pulling the trigger. But, uh, you know, it could the wheels could fall off that one. <laughs> See what I did with that? Tesla? Wheels could fall off? Mm. It's kind of like laughing at your own joke, isn't it? Anyway, Cullen Frost Bankers, we talked about how the financials um, were kind of weak in some of these at least the ones we found in the scan. Cullen Frost, CFR, want to see how this did. Uh, it did kind of pull down a little today. Volume has not picked up that much. But we did talk about it a few days ago. CL, uh, what is that? CLGX, uh, CoreLogic. Now, this one is back uh, kind of to its breakout level. Um, 
Going to get a little doji out here. Not a lot of love later in the day. So we'll keep an eye on that. Eh, what do we got? Uh, 2.37 billion shares. Eh, not a whole lot. Got a email. Uh, Mobileye, Jeff from Kissimmee, where the power is still on. Uh, MBLY, of course, uh, these folks are in the self-driving car business um, and uh, make a lot of control equipment, lasers, that kind of stuff for it. They uh, infamously split with Tesla about it and now working with some other companies too. Um, but, uh, you know, it's this is a very tough one. Uh, this is all about selling the sizzle and not the sales today. It's all about the long-term electronics and cars. Uh, very unclear to me who's going to really come up with the LiDAR uh, system that really works and ends up being massively adopted. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with LiDAR, L-I-D-A-R, I think is it, is it pronounced, uh, unfortunately is about a $40,000 system as we speak today. Uh, that is all those lasers spinning and wheeling around on these self-driving cars. Everybody's trying to figure out a way to make that cheap enough to actually put it on a car. One of the reasons why I think it's a little farther off than most people think, that is, i.e., you're going to have those lasers, too. I still have yet to see anybody try LiDAR in driving rain or, or horrible snows or all the other things that can happen in the real world. All these tests still happening in bright, shine, uh, sunshiny day here in Florida or maybe in California, but uh, not in the uh, driving rain and not in the driving snow, sleet or ice that happens. Anyway, these systems are pretty expensive. Uh, like I said, some of them are upwards uh, that Mobileye is involved with. Uh, by the system time to put it on a car, uh, ending up about $40,000. I just don't see any kind of volume in this until someone figures out a way to make it cheaply. And then when they make it cheaply, what's going to happen? Um, you know, you got a little gap out here at about 40 bucks. I don't see any sign that this thing has really stopped so far. Uh, but your sign of you know, your really congestion zone and support area is right at that $39 level. You got a little gap that's, you know, 4.3 million shares uh, on that day, which is what, the uh, June 20th. Uh, and you'd want that thing to come back in there with lighter volume. Um, is it okay? Yes. Would I wanted to, would I play it? Probably no. I would have liked to seen this high off the August 23rd high come back with lighter volume. This thing may need to bounce a few times around that $39 level uh, before all the energy comes out, before I would want to play it. Um, no signs of it breaking down, but no signs of a huge a profit in the near future either. Uh, CLI. Thanks, Jeff and Kissimmee, where his power is still on. Uh, what else do we have out here? Matt Kelly, uh, Cummings, another big diesel company out here. Um, they basically broke their previous high on the same volume two days ago. Wanted to see how this is happening. Uh, looks like it's going to come back into the trading range. Uh, closed below 127.64 is a signal that this could not break out. What I really so far dislike about this setup is the energy be, uh, from this September 7th low into this uh, October 5th high. Um, could have seen a lot more juice in it. Um, volume has picked up a little bit more than yesterday and the day before. Um, you know, we've got, what, 1.4 million shares already. Um, it dipped back down. It may close above the 127.64, but doesn't look to me like any kind of sign of, an, of a huge bull market coming in diesel engines anytime soon. CVS Caremark got a couple little dojis down here uh, and light volume uh, of the previous low. The February 9th low came in at $86.50. Uh, 11 million shares uh, got into it with uh, 7.9 million shares here two days ago. Uh, and two dojis, but uh, today, again, light volume. Um, a lot of these are setting up, like I said, it's, as tests. Um, the energy off these last moves down, August 2nd, in this case, to the October 5th low here uh, just two days ago, 
uh, energy was strong. Uh, so maybe you get a bounce out of this. I would be very worried uh, that you just skip past some of these gaps to the downside, uh, like in CVS. Now, maybe it does only last a few days, but I would be more worried about a blowout, even temporary in this. And maybe that's where you would want to look if you wanted to get back into CVS Caremark Corporation. Be back shortly. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. My name is Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability and host of the Trader's Ed Show heard daily here at TFNN.com. On Wednesday, October 19th at 5 p.m., I'll be hosting a special one-hour event, Trading Range Boundary Lines, where I'll teach subscribers how to identify hidden support and resistance levels, the kind that you definitely need to be aware of for your trading and investing. You'll learn how to plot major horizontal support and resistance, how to identify breakouts and breakdowns, and how to project the next price move. These support and resistance levels work for stocks, ETFs, futures contracts, currencies and these patterns work on every time frame by signing up for mastering probability right now you get the first month of my newsletter service for only 49 dollars, and that includes october 19th trading range boundary webinar plus if you sign up now i'll include access to my three one-hour workshops the ultimate trading signals the ultimate reversal signals and the long short line that every trader needs to know this is an investment you won't regret for all the details of the upcoming workshop and reserve your seat today visit the front page of tfnn.com now catch tom o'brien Ryan, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we're back. We were looking at CVS uh, when we left off. What else is out there? Netflix, again, I'm... Um, thinking that Netflix is very interesting at these levels. It's going to tell us a great deal. Uh, we've gotten into this heavy gap down that happened on the 19th of April. 55.7 million shares got into it with this 12 million shares. On the 5th, uh, yesterday, we had about 6.5 million shares. A little uh, lower out here today on 7 million shares. Uh, but... Um, you know, a stock that I suspect could get back to about 89 bucks. Again, perpetually highly short, so I'm going to have to wait and see some kind of squeeze out here on no volume uh, before I would get interested in pulling the trigger on it. Uh, but uh, fairly weak looking to me. Uh, all the discussion about Disney buying it, I think, is a bunch of hoopla uh, about like the Twitter thing. I imagine we're going to see this thing uh, dissolve back before that. 
Um, and again, at the highs of markets, it's not uncommon to see a lot of loose and uh, loose chatter. Again, this is very much like Twitter other than it makes money. Uh, uh, it's kind of more like Tesla and it's highly overvalued. And as we talked this week, one of the things that you need to know about content companies is that they should have a much lower PE, not a much higher PE. They will run across a number of things, especially with Netflix even expanding more its content, uh, but also having some missteps over the last few uh, outings. Some of the stuff very good, some of the other stuff kind of old in the tooth, house of cards, that kind of stuff. That's... Uh, I think that's kind of run its course. So you always know that when these things, they have a good run, uh, it's normally a reversion to the mean. And the mean is about half the stuff ends up working well, and about half the stuff does not. Um, <clears throat> the question is, do are they going to have anything to replace House of Cards and some of the other big draws that they have? Uh, we look at uh, or talked about HBO with their new Westworld uh, trying to get something ramped up in time for the last uh, see, uh, season of, uh, what is that? It's that goofy thing everybody watches with dragons and stuff. Everybody getting speared. Oh, what, I'm just having a mental blank on it today. Um, Game of Thrones, that's what it is. Uh, so anyway, they're they're trying to do it. Now, Netflix really needs to get a big winner and I haven't seen anything that looks like the big winner for them yet to replace House of Cards, which is probably in its last season. So uh, why they have some new stuff coming out, some interesting stuff, I, it hasn't really hit the zeitgeist of the must-have, which uh, I think Game of Thrones has kind of been kind of the must-have TV show to talk about around the water cooler on Monday. Um, and that's it. I just don't see a strong enough independent thing. They've got a lot of little smaller ones. But uh, to me, it looks like they're trying to please the critics and not probably pleasing the fans. As I said already, that I let uh, I canceled mine about two months ago. Figure that it's going to give it about six months for them to get some new stuff for me to watch that I'm interested in. Anyway, uh, very interesting one out here as we close the day. Uh, what do we got? Uh, 2157 on the S&P cash, 2.44 billion shares. Uh, we're off about four points. Uh, didn't go higher. I guess that's what you can say if you're a bear. And if you're a bull, why not? Anyway, we'll see you Monday. Grumble, grumble. Same bat channel, same bat time. Remember to sell when you can, not when you want to. Or have to. Or anything. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.